Hey, it's Eric from LED Grow Lights Depot. By popular request, I'll be unboxing and assembling the Horticulture Lighting Group HLG 320 watt DIY kit. The kit comes with everything you need except for the wire snippers or scissors and a screwdriver, and no soldering is required. This kit should take you around 20 minutes to put together. Inside the box you'll find three QB288 V2 quantum boards with top bin Samsung LM301B diodes, a power cord and 120 volt NEMA 515P plug, one Meanwell HLG 320H C1750A LED driver, also comes with solid core wire, Wago connectors and a waterproof AC cable connector, hardware, and hanger clips. Last but not least, one aluminum heatsink. Now the first thing that I'm going to do after taking everything out of the box is organize it and take out the boards. So I'm going to quickly show you the boards, so the HLG288 quantum boards. Taking all three out here, putting them on the heatsink. I'm going to open up the driver, and the driver has two leads coming from it. So it has a DC end and an AC end. So this one with the two wires is DC, and the other one with the three wires is the AC end. And here's the power cord with the leads. And lastly, all the hardware, which includes the DC wires, the waterproof connector, the Wego connectors, the nuts and bolts, the hanger clips and sticker, and lastly, a zip tie. All right. I'm gonna organize all the hardware. And these are the legs which are gonna go on the ends of the board. So what the legs do is create a space between the quantum boards and the surface that you're building the unit on because you don't wanna lay the quantum board connectors on the surface of whatever you're building this on because with any pressure they might break. So the legs create that gap and then you could adjust the length as you need to. And you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to how you have these boards oriented. So I have the positives on top, negatives on the bottom. The next board over, I'm gonna invert that. So I have the negatives on top and the positives on the bottom. And then the last board is gonna be inverted compared to the middle one. So same as the first board, positive on top, negative on the bottom. The next thing that you want to do is screw the boards into the heat sink. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the light. This fixture is available in 3000 Kelvin or 4000 Kelvin and will flower a 2.5 foot by 5 foot area. Use two of these in a 5 foot by 5 foot flowering area for good intensity or in a 4 foot by 4 foot area for maximum intensity. The recommended veg footprint for one of these lights is a 3 foot by 6 foot area or 3.5 foot by 7 foot area. Two of these lights will cover a 6 foot by 6 foot to 7 foot by 7 foot area for veg. One kit will replace a light intensity of a 600 watt HID grow light. Two kits will replace a 1200 watt HID light. Alright, we got all those boards screwed down and all I needed was a screwdriver for that. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that these legs are the correct distance just to make sure we don't crush our connectors. And we're going to mount the driver onto the heat sink. So it doesn't really matter which way you have the driver, but in this case, just if you want to follow me, you can orient the driver just like I have it. So notice that the two DC leads are on the bottom and then the AC leads are on top. Just using those long screws to screw the driver down onto the heatsink. You could drop the screw in from the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter. In this case, I have it going from the bottom. And now I'm just going to tighten that down with a screwdriver. Alright, looks like it's holding pretty well. Now we're going to wire up the board. I'm just going to organize all my parts that I'm going to need. And to wire up the board, we're going to first hook up the negative side. So the negative is that blue wire coming from the driver. And I'm going to go over the driver, through this little hole in the heat sink, and into the negative side of the board. 
and you'll see why I'm going over the driver in a second. It's basically gonna make a cleaner look on the fixture after it's complete. So to hook this up, I'm going to install this Wago connector. It's really simple, just open it up, put in the wire and close it down. And now I'm gonna measure how long of a DC connection I need. So just taking some quick measurements and cutting it with some uh, pliers, just stripping the wire. And it's about the right size. You can use more wire if you want, but you're not gonna have as clean of a look. So I'm trying to get it as short as possible so we don't have wires going everywhere. And I'm gonna put this wire inside the other side of the Wago connector, close it up through the hole in the heat sink and into the connector on the board. Again, this is going into the negative side. Now check out how easy this is to install. All I have to do is push it in. I wanna push it in all the way till you can't push it in anymore. And then try pulling it out and it should stay in there pretty tight. Shouldn't come out at all. All right, I'm happy with that. The next step is to hook up the positive wire to the positive connector on the board. So to do this, we actually have to run the DC wire over the driver. The correct length, Just stripping the ends down. All right, looks good to me. I'm gonna take the Wago connector, put it in one side, clamp it down and then install this on the brownish wire, which is the positive side. Over the driver, through the hole in the heat sink, and into the positive connector on the rightmost board. And same as before, just push it in all the way. Tug it out, make sure it stays in. All right, perfect. Now that the driver is connected to the boards, we have to complete the circuit. So to do this, I'm gonna flip over the heat sink and cut a piece of short wire to go in between the boards. So this is the first cut that I'm gonna make. Now I'm just getting an approximate measurement of how long the wire has to be. I'm gonna strip it down, okay. Put it in one side. This is the negative side of the first board into the positive side of the next board. I actually cut this wire a little bit too short, so I'm gonna use this as a teachable moment and tell you how to remove a wire if you had already put it into a connector. What you're gonna do is take a screwdriver or other pointed object, press it down on the connector, and you should be able to take that wire right out. Now you're gonna to wanna to put some decent pressure on the connector, um, and that should free up the wire. So actually cut another piece to the right length, actually a little bit too long, which doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit, put a little curvature into it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with board two and three. So this is going from the negative of the middle board to the positive of the last board on the left. Now this wire was cut a little bit longer. So that's actually perfect. Okay, now the driver and the boards are connected. The last significant thing we're gonna do is connect the power cord to the AC end of the driver. Now notice we have three leads coming off the power cord and three leads coming off the driver. Now before I do that, I wanna show you different ways to connect it so we can use this waterproof connector uh, again, that's a waterproof connector. However, this unit itself isn't waterproof, uh, but this connector is gonna give you a more solid connection. Or we can use these Wago connectors. So I'm gonna use the Wago connectors because this is gonna connect way quicker. So I'm gonna put the Wago connectors on the driver's side. Just 
putting one on each of the leads coming out. And these are a little too long and I don't want any exposed wire, so I'm gonna trim these down. Now the first one we're gonna connect is the ground. So green with green. Now these other wires don't match exactly. So I'm gonna connect the black with the brown and the white with the blue. So positive, positive, negative, negative. And that's it. So here's a closer look. Pretty simple. Now that's really it. However, I'm gonna show you a few more things. So there's some extra hardware that you can keep. You don't really need this. This is a zip tie, which is going to keep all of these wires together. Just gonna to give you a cleaner look and you're not gonna have wires going all over the place. So you don't have to use this, but I would highly recommend it. Trim that piece off. All right, looking nice and tidy. And then same with the legs. You can take these off or you can leave them on. If you're hanging it up, there's really no reason to keep them on, but if you are gonna take this light down in the future, you could leave them on so you don't lose them. And last but not least, we're going to install the hanger clips. And these just install right on the heat sink. Get a closer look. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And these don't meet in the middle. However, you can use one ratchet strap or two ratchet straps to hang this fixture. All right, let's plug this in. Whoa, all right super bright as I say in most of my videos the camera doesn't really do it justice this is a lot brighter than it looks on camera as you know the camera is going to adjust to the light intensity but yeah I would safely say that this covers a two and a half foot by five foot area for flower it's really bright and I think you're gonna agree once you turn it on yourself Thumbs up. Okay, you could also dim this down. So you might have noticed that there was a little rubber stopper on the driver. Now if you take this out and use a screwdriver, you could turn this dimming knob inside of the driver and it's gonna dim it down all the way to 50%. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're on the fence about buying one of these, I would highly recommend it. Get good quality parts, super efficient, and they're not that expensive. Check out the links in the description for the other powerful HLG kits that we offer. Currently, the HLG 260 watt kit and the HLG 600 watt kit. Give this video a like if you're subscribed to us on YouTube and a fist bump emoji if you follow us on Instagram. Instagram link in the description. And for all of you YouTube subscribers, we have more great content planned for you in 2019. So stay tuned. See you guys and gals.